Where is the best place to build in the upper yard in Grounded 1.0? I'm gonna answer that question today with five locations I think are pretty good. I'm also gonna show you some of the older ones for you new players to Grounded, where you should go in the lower yard. I've got a system, it's based on resources, the types of bugs that you'll encounter, easiness for completing the story and the flow of the game, and of course, building. Is it flat? Does it offer a nice view? What are the bonuses of building there for aesthetics? I waffled way too long on my first edit, so don't worry, I've cut this down considerably. Hopefully, it will give you a good idea, and you can show me some of your curations when you join my Discord and show me some pictures of your bases when they're done. Let's go, the best places to build in Grounded. So first off, we're heading to the Big Standing Stones, or the Highlands is what it's actually called. It's right in between the Moldock Castle and the Upper Pond, and of course the Hedge area. Whenever you've got somewhere right in the corner of one part of the yard, it's never going to be as good as somewhere more central. So resource-wise, you do get the basics, but you've not got a lot of mushrooms around this area unless you go into the wetlands below, and it's still a little bit of a pain going and get some of the stuff you'll need from a sandbox like salt, as well as obviously termites. That said, if you're looking to farm a lot of the bosses, i.e. the Broodmother and the Mantis, then you are going to need somewhere in between to get to quickly, and I feel like this is not a bad spot. It has got a bunch of the late game creatures, so it's pretty dangerous, so don't come here if you've never played Grounded much before, and to some experienced players, farming them Black Widows and Oxes is going to be the main point. You can gain access to the upper yard by going around the back of Moldock Castle pretty easily, and like I said, in terms of story flow, well, yeah, you'll be revisiting the hedge as one of the first places to go, and then obviously taking on Moldock Castle and the stump areas. So it's not too bad, but still not the best. You come here really to build on top of this giant massive stone and have a massive imposing mushroom or ash castle. Maybe you build a settlement that cascades all the way down these standing rocks. It is a bit of a pain to get up to, but for sure, once you've got their mushrooms going, it could be your second big fortress base location you need. Bonus, there's a field station down below as well. So we're heading off to the second location, which isn't too far. It's just across the way from the opposite end of Moldock Castle, in between that and the upper yard and the stump area. It's slightly better because it does give more easier access to that areas and there's a lot more resources that you can go and gather once you go past the wooden posts. Has to be said, in the immediate vicinity, it's pretty light. There's no grass stalks, there's not much going on here at all. But again, we're talking about bringing your mushroom pieces to build some sort of fortress, as this is meant to be kind of late game. We are on a rock as well, so you get a nice view, and you're far enough away from the mosquitoes that they won't bother you too much. So pretty similar in terms of resources, although it shades it getting access to the pine cones in the stump and some of the other stuff you're going to need. The bugs is pretty much the same, the story flow is a little bit better, but the building maybe isn't as good, as you don't get as much as a big, wide, flat space to build on, and it's not as pretty as the highlands. Last word of warning, when the haze spreads, it does come pretty close to the wooden stumps up here, and you do have to fight infected wall spiders. Next, we've got the biggest space, and maybe flattest, that you can get, other than the deck on the other side of the yard, and with a much better view. Of course, it is on top of the compost box. As always, bringing mushrooms it won't be a problem building your castle, but getting up to this point is a bit of a hassle. That's why I'm going to give it a 2, because you will have to go running back and down to build up your scaffolding to get up here. Although you can hook on to the rubbish bags to make it a little bit easier in terms of support. The other answer is only 14 weed stems, and you can build a ramp up from the Java Matic all the way up to the top of here. Once you've killed the two stink bugs that are here, they won't respawn. So that is a bit of a pain having to go down to go and get the bugs that you need or find and kill them, even though some of them are pretty close like the Black Widows or the Undershed area. And the resources again is still a bit of a mission if you are not building out of bricks. But story flow, it's right bang next to the Java Matic and the stump areas. And building, there's absolutely masses of space to build something really impressive and big. Great for creative builders and big, big, big projects. So we're only going a little bit further over on the sides of the shed for this next one, but it immediately improves all the resources as well as the bugs. With the undershed directly underneath you, you can go and farm the black oxes as well as get a huge amount of lint. Its big letdown is it's just not that pretty. You do have the extra security of the actual shed wall giving you protection, but it doesn't have the best viewpoint in my opinion. You have to be careful not to build all over it, otherwise you'll get the fire ants trying to break through quite regularly. 
top tip, leave a little space for them to go past the base. There is obviously a field station as well, and yeah, it's near the very end game activities. On top of all that, you're much closer to the picnic table, the barbecue zone, and the termite hill as well. Make sure you don't stand on the jump cables and take advantage of the food that would always spawn close to you. Pupa for days underneath the deck and bonus black ant parts as well. And of course, nails spawning inside the ashtray. So next up is a little bit of an upgrade from where I usually say go to. You can see I've got my little ramp here. This is the spot that I usually say is the best place to build as you'll see at the end of the video. But on the flower bed above in the upper yard, you can find this small little island that once you clear it is great for a great little tower. You've got the added protection of the water giving you a bit of protection, but it's easy to miss as it's in the jungle or very dense area. So here it is on the map. Yes, I know bugs can jump and with bug defense being a thing, maybe I should have took that into account a bit more. But with the way they've nerfed quite a lot of the bug raiding, it doesn't feel as important anymore. You still have to build some defenses and you will get some raids, but it's not as OP as it was when it got first introduced where you really had to think carefully about where to build so bugs wouldn't wreck everything. Honestly though, if you're not a fan of tight spaces or building a tower, then just go ahead and build on one of the big flagstones next to it overlooking the pond and the area that I used to rate. So bigger builders can certainly take advantage. You've got the shortcut next to the science pod that brings you up very close. In fact, it's super close. It's right next to where all of the ladybird larvae will come out. But don't let that put you off. Apart from them, it's really relatively a safe area. I'll give it the same total score, but it's got a little bit better story flow in terms of when you're starting out. So I would actually make or think about making this your permanent base location. Set up a camp, go through the hedge area, and then think about getting to this spot. It might be tough going through that ladybird lava tunnel, so make sure you get up here in a different way, either build or throw the bomb at the rock that lets you up the ascent near the barbecue. But it's certainly somewhere that you could think about aiming for a little bit earlier than you might think. And because it's a more unique location in terms of what's around it with the water, or if you just want more space on the flagstones here, then I'm giving it building a four. It just misses out compared to the last place near the deck in terms of resources and bugs, because you've got to go a bit further to get some of that late game tier three stuff. Has it replaced my favorite other location? Yeah, probably now. I would make the extra effort to get up here so that I can really go to town and just build a stairway like I've built here roughly with the ramps. In terms of flow, Grounded really is something that you will have to revisit certain areas over and again. Like you'll go back to the sandbox to get lots of salt, the barbecue zone if you want lots of charcoal to build factories, as well as obviously the picnic table to get loads of crow feathers. You're close enough that you can top up on some of the water creatures, the meats particularly for foods and smoothies. And if you never really cleared out the haze completely, then you're still only a stone's throw away from it. You do have to go a bit further for them berries, so I would say stock up on that before you move here. But you've got the shed with all the pupa, the undershed close by, and you're relatively closer to the termite and the trenches. So that's why this area is my favourite place to build in Grounded 1.0. I would avoid building anywhere near the stump. It's too far out of the way and you only really get pine cones here as a big bonus and maybe a bit of pondermoss once you've killed enough black widows. But it's just very dangerous and it's not somewhere that you really want to have a base. And just a quick breakdown of some of the older locations when you first start the game, the baseball I concede is a good spot. I used to prefer the little footstep that was nearby but it is higher off the ground so you're not going to get attacked by as many creatures. The wooden posts are still great, yes, wolf spiders and more can jump up here, but if you build on the tallest one, it's actually still pretty tough, especially if you put some walls directly around it. The bombardier beetle stone, which is just on the opposite side before you go into the dry grass, is still a great location for maybe a factory or a bigger build. It's a pretty flat stone and it is relatively central to the rest of the yard. I would never build a base inside the hedge directly anymore. It sounds cool building a tree base, but honestly, you'll have such a drag getting to other places. Unless we do get some other means to fast travel or get across, it's just exhaustive running or using zip lines and building huge towers. Likewise, anywhere near that lower bed that I used to say would, could be a potentially good spot to get to the upper yard, I still don't think it has enough benefits to really build here, only if you're going to go right to the top of the standing stones in the highlands next up to it. And you're just way too far in the corner to go all around the rest of the yard and get all the other stuff. 
Rashi's Island, which is in the middle of the wetlands, if you clear it all out, it could be epic and you're surrounded by water, so you'll be protected against most raids, other than mosquitoes. But it's a pretty big job clearing this all out to make it something worthwhile to build on, and I would still say it's a bit too far from everything else going on in the game. The picnic table is still one of the best places to build, whether or not it's underneath or on top of, as long as you can build bridges going straight to the barbecue zone or the sandbox, you'll be able to get tons of food and crow feathers. I would never build on the deck either in front of the house anymore, it's just simply too barren and takes too long to get to the other parts, the more crucial parts of the upper yard. And likewise now we know what's in the upper yard, you don't have to worry about your base being destroyed by building above the actual flagstones near the pond. This is why I suggested building here, just in case something had changed in the upper yard, but it looks to be okay now, so I would still build at some of the stones above and build a decent staircase. I did really crap on this location as somewhere that you need to defend yourself. At first I thought it could be good to protect yourself through these holes, but mosquitoes will absolutely wreck it. And with the nerf to the base raiding like I mentioned, it's not needed as much. Yes, you're near a field station, and yes, you're pretty close to some of them upper yard areas, especially if you can build a bridge, but it's still just a bit too far away from places like the barbecue grill and the termite. If they ever change it and make a tunnel that leads up to the upper yard, it could be something revisiting. And if you don't want to deal with too many ladybird larvae or be too close to that and dangerous creatures, then go ahead and build where I said the best place was, like I built my castle in my 100 days. It's a pain in the ass to get up to, you still have to go and blow up the rock with the ascent next to the barbecue, or make sure you build a decent bridge near the franken line. But done right and a bit of time and effort put into it, it does give you a great base and location for all areas of the yard. So there we go, that's my tips on the best base locations in the upper yard and a few for you noobs starting out still. If you disagree with me, let me know. Tell me some of the good points and bad points about other places you've built and come and share your pictures of your bases in my Discord. Until next time, Ratbags, I will catch you later.